You idiot, I said I wanted to find a game where I can craft a lot, not craft cheese. Ah! Oh, well, guess I'll have to find one myself. No, wrong game. Nope, not that either. No, oh, yeah, that's it, that's it, that's the one. Welcome back to another RimWorld Guide video hosted by yours truly, the awesome Newbit. As you can probably guess, I'll be talking about crafting in RimWorld in this video, plus providing tips on how you can improve and streamline your crafting experience. Crafting is a pretty vital part of managing your RimWorld colony, so pay attention and strap in as I guide you through it. But before we begin, remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. First, what is crafting? Crafting is a skill that allows your pawns to create items basically. It affects smithing, tailoring, and craft work types as well as the extraction of metal from slag and disassembling mechanoids. Crafting also influences the amount of resources gained from these activities. If you install the Master of Crafting mod, the list of items you can craft is expanded to include medicine, drugs, and explosive cells which can be manufactured in large quantities. It's balanced out by the fact that bulk crafting requires more resources so you can't just make large amounts at a time easily. Essentially, you'll need the crafting skill to manufacture items your colony needs from food to weapons unless you're content to just scavenging everything. Not very practical, but hey, it's your game, you make the choices. Having said that, what exactly can you create with crafting? In the early game, the crafting spot allows you access to primitive weapons, smoke leaf joints, and tribal wear. Nothing particularly fancy, but it's enough for your colony's survival. You can also create an art bench for artistic works. In the medieval era, you'll gain access to the smithy, which is able to forge medieval weapons like long swords and great bows. This era also unlocks two other crafting stations, the hand tailor bench for clothing and the stone cutter's table for crafting. The industrial era. Now this is where it gets fun. This era blows things wide open and gives you a lot of crafting station options from various types of goods and items. The list of industrial era crafting stations is as follows. The fabrication bench used by smiths to create components, advanced components, as well as advanced weapons, power armor, and bionic body parts. The drug lab, which obviously manually manufactures drugs. The electric smithy, which shares similar functionality as smithies from previous eras. The electric tailor bench for sewing clothes. Lastly, the machining table, which allows you to create advanced industrial era weapons like guns, mechanical limbs, and mortar shells. Machining tables are necessary for disassembling mechanoid corpses to retrieve steel, plasteel, and components. Okay, you've got your crafting stations. Great! Now, how do you craft an item? You can initiate a work order by clicking on the production building, then the bills button. This one right here. A list will pop up where you can select bills to be completed. Work tables need to be manned by pawns in order to complete their order, so I'd recommend placing a comfortable chair there so your pawn doesn't end up in a bad mood. Note the crafting stations use electricity like the electric smithy can break down. This is indicated by a yellow alert bar on your screen and a red flashing mark on the affected machine. To repair the machine, you'll need one component and an assigned pawn. This only applies to electrical stations as regular crafting stations will never break down. Oh hey, sorry, I was busy throwing away, I mean inspecting the items my pawns made. They're pretty bad. I might have to go whip them again. Anyway, <laughs> have you been enjoying the video so far? If you have, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more informative content like this. Oh, you crafted this. Finally, someone who knows what they're doing. Next, let's have a look at quality. The quality of an item is determined by the crafting skill of the pawn that crafted it, ranging from awful to legendary. Quality affects various item variables, with the most notable being selling price and combat stats for weapons and armor. Note that at awful quality, items sell for 50%, while legendary items can hit up to 55 Oh, whoa, ooh, higher, 500% of the base price. This price is further affected by the value of raw materials used. Be aware, legendary quality items can only be created under a specific condition, though. The craft has to have the mental inspiration buff named Inspired Creativity. When this buff is present, the next item structure or piece of art with a quality level, as some craft items have a fixed quality, will automatically have its level boosted by two. If the item is at excellent or masterwork quality, a legendary item will be produced. Oh, 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 oh. 
This isn't guaranteed, of course. Even the most capable crafters have only a 60% chance per inspiration buff to produce a legendary item. When inspired creativity is present, it becomes impossible to craft an item of poor or awful quality, even at zero skill level. The affected pawn will produce an item of at least normal quality. There are ways to manipulate inspiration to get higher chances of legendary items, since inspiration only takes effect when an item is finished. You can cheat the system a little by leaving an item unfinished and boosting a crafter's skill level as high as possible in the meantime. For example, you can order them to stop work at the art piece and craft items with a fixed quality stat, which I'll cover later on instead. As these items won't change their quality regardless of the conditions, the inspired creativity buff isn't consumed when crafting them. Once you're satisfied with the pawn's crafting skill, return to the artwork and put their newly found skills to good use. Keep in mind that the inspiration buff only lasts for eight days. If you want to avoid a mad scramble to create art before the buff expires, the solution would be to keep an unfinished item or items in storage while waiting for the buff to occur. This has no disadvantages compared to utilizing the buff normally except maybe consuming some storage space. This strategy is particularly useful for work-intensive projects that are always in demand, like marine armor or grand sculptures. Once raw materials have been used to craft items, they cannot be retrieved. What this means is that you'll want to avoid assigning unskilled pawns to craft using valuable materials like thrombo fur, mega sloth wool, hyperweave, or plasteel. You'll want to crank up an item's quality as high as possible. I mean, you wouldn't give a baby a diamond for their arts and crafts, right? If you're gonna let pawns practice crafting to boost their skills, just give them some cheap to work with. Which leads me to my next point, how to improve your crafting skill. Aside from item stats and value, crafting skill also determines the time required for pawns to craft items, extract metals from slag, and disassemble mechanoids. Even if you don't care that much about your item quality, it's still worthwhile to improve your pawn's crafting skill so your base operations run smoothly. Each point of crafting skill a pawn has decreases crafting time by 10%, while also increasing the resource yield of disassembly and extraction by 2.5%. As as mentioned, the only way to improve crafting skills for pawns to make things over and over and over. Bear in mind, you'll only be able to use crafting spots, tailoring benches, or smithies as practice locations. Fabrication benches are only available to already skilled crafters, while drug production and brewing do not boost crafting skill. Again, do not use rare or expensive materials to train crafting, okay? You'll just waste them. Instead, stick with cheap materials, which include bird skin, pig skin, light leather, patched leather, and plain leather. In particular, you'll want to avoid using cloth which needs to be bought or grown, or human leather which is too expensive. Mm -hmm. Weapons are also not a good item class to practice crafting with, as they can only be sold for 20% of the base price regardless of quality. While this ensures you can't just pick up weapons dropped by raiders and turn a huge profit, it also means that the arms trade isn't a practical way of making money. Only craft weapons that you expect to use and assign your best crafters for higher weapon stats. You won't want to practice with armor either, as it tends to require rare materials, which means clothing is your primary option. One tip to boost the amount of crafting skill experience a pawn gains is to slow down their crafting speed. Wait, what? How does that work? It doesn't seem very logical to me. Why would I want to slow down the crafting skill? Oh, yes. Well, the way skill experience works is that it's gained over time instead of per task. This means you can gain more experience per material used if you slow the learner down. To do so, just let them craft items in unfavorable conditions like the dark, cold weather, or a room without electricity. Of course, make sure they don't die in those conditions. That would be awful. A little torture is perfectly fine, but you don't want to waste potential slaves, okay? <laughs> it's a nice day for relaxing and watching my pawns work themselves to near death. What about you? How's your day? If you have any feedback, suggestions, or questions regarding the tips in this video, feel free to drop a comment down below. In fact, even if you don't, just drop a comment anyway to chat. I'd appreciate it. It's not like I'm lonely or anything. The tip mentioned only really works at crafting level 5 or lower, though after that the material cost and potential item profit it evens out, so it becomes rather pointless. Beyond level 8, if you want to train a competent item crafter further, my suggestion would be to have them build advanced components at a fabrication bench. In order to win the game and end it, you'll need to build a spaceship for your pawns to depart the planet. This ship requires a lot of advanced components, which can only be purchased in limited numbers from traders, so crafting them early is a good way to boost skill. You don't have to worry about quality of these items, as their value is fixed regardless of crafting skill. Alternatively, as long as 
minimum skill requirement is met, you can create bionic limbs and organs, which also have a fixed quality. The downside of this is that you may end up with useless bionic body parts, as it's hard to determine which are necessary for your pawns beforehand. In general, bionic hands will always be useful though. Well, maybe your pawn doesn't just want to craft devices and weapons all day. Maybe they have aspirations to be an artist. As you probably noticed, there's a crafting station for artistic items. Let's dive a bit further into that. The process of crafting odd items and boosting skill is quite simple. Compared to regular items in general, you'll want to have a pawn make as many sculptures as possible. Sculptures come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. With larger sizes consuming more resources and having a higher beauty and monetary value. Artistic items can always be salvaged to return 75% of their materials, which means you won't make much of a loss even if the quality turns out awful and your item has a low value. Having said that, poor quality sculptures can still be useful, while awful quality sculptures have a negative beauty value and make an environment more ugly. They can be placed in bedrooms that have aesthetic ponds with no negative effect. It's like having your child put their drawing on your fridge. Sometimes it's just makes it's yeah, you understand. While you can salvage most of the resources used for art, it's still a good idea to use less valuable material for practicing. Typically, wood is a good choice. Jade has the best balance of beauty and availability, so save it for your capable and possibly inspired artist pawns. That's most of the advice and guidance I can offer regarding crafting, but there are a few more miscellaneous tips to improve your crafting experience in RimWorld. One way to massively improve the efficiency of your item crafting process is to use the drop on floor command. Surrounding the workstation of a highly skilled crafter with materials means they have easier access to them and can craft quickly, while ordering them to drop the items on the floor means that they don't have to travel to place items elsewhere and can continue crafting unimpeded. Apart from that, you can also manipulate pawns mental statuses to a certain extent to increase the chances of them getting the inspiration buff. The more common method is to ensure their mood is high by giving them good food, a nice living and work environment, and well decorated rooms at 100 mood. The average rate for pawns to gain this buff will be once every 10 days. At the same time, a higher mood also helps them perform other tasks better, so it's something you can aim for. If you find your colonists' mood are always pretty high, that might be a good time to add more recreation to push them over the edge into inspiration. Alternatively, you can be cruel. If you have a pawn with a tortured artist trait, you can abuse them by constantly forcing mental breaks on them via bad conditions to potentially trigger the inspiration buff over and over and over. This allows you to pump out legendary items at a very high rate with the cost of possibly driving your artist pawn insane. It's fine though, a true artist suffers for his art, or the sake of his slave master. So that's the gist of it. If you're looking for tips and tricks to craft items and improve your efficiency, bear in mind that these tips may become more or less helpful as future balance patches come out. There's still pretty good pieces of advice in general, but you have to keep your own game situation in mind and adjust accordingly. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any feedback, tips, or comments, leave them down below. Remember to subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends, your parents, and your dog. Have fun crafting items or make your pawns slave away for you. Newbert out.